Welcome to The Fitting Bay guys, my name is Nathan. Today we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough on the Pioneer AVHZ 5250. This is a new, semi-new release unit from Pioneer. Um, we've already done the review on the 5150 and the competitive units of the 5150. Um, so this is very similar, however the unit looks different and it's on the new platform as well. So um, I guess we'll jump right into it. Okay guys, so first up, we'll just look at the box, okay? So some of the features that they're listing here on the box. We've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, showing us that it is compatible with Waze and Maps. We have Spotify, Weblink Bluetooth, um, hands-free calling and streaming, music streaming, so that's through Bluetooth. Um, dual phone connection, that's pretty cool, so you can have two phones paired simultaneously. USB audio and video, 13-band equalizer, three high volt RCA pre-outs and steering wheel control ready. Okay, in the box you will get power harness. So we do go through this in a lot of the videos. Um, you have speaker wires. Okay, there is a mute wire they're still using. You don't need that. Illumination wire, another one. Don't really need all these units have automatic dimming so don't really need that we have a remote for either amp or our power antenna or both and then our powers um, we have a light green wire here which is fairly long uh, that says park brake on it so what you can do to eliminate the park brake issue is just connect it straight to ground so when you do your ground connection, just connect that one together. I uh, don't recommend doing that, but if you do that, you'll be able to use the unit and all of its functions without having to be pulled over and have the handbrake up. Um, oh yeah, also reverse input. So if you connect this wire to the 12 volts at the reverse light, you can put the car in reverse and it will switch the head unit over to show you the image on the, um, at the back of the car. USB, so rear-mounted USB, plug that into the unit, go ahead and run the female to the glove box or to wherever you like in the car. External microphone, okay, it's a um, good feature to have. You need to have external microphone, they're much better. Remote, some mounting screws, and of course, the instruction manual. Okay guys, so we'll start with the back of the unit. What we have here, we have the microphone input, steering wheel control input, auxiliary input, the USB input, power input. We have our three RCA outs. And so on the um, chassis itself, you will see we have our three pre outs. So we have the subwoofer, the rears and the fronts, left and right, uh, left and right, okay. Here we have AV inputs. So you have a right and left AV input, and you also have a video input, a video output, and the reverse camera input. So you can send video signal out to maybe a headrest screen or roof mount, and you can actually use video input as well. This little plug here is for the TV tuner, which, we does, which doesn't work here in Australia, but uh, somewhere in the world, you might be able to buy the Pioneer TV tuner module and then you can also watch TV on the unit. The unit is the complete doubled in full size. Uh, it's a little bit cut out here, but for the most part it is doubled in. We don't have a short chassis. We don't have a single din with the screen. We've just got big doubled in. Here we have the front of the unit guys. So Pioneer have done the resistive 6.8 inch display. Right at the top here. Let's see if I can get it with my nail. No, you'll need a pin. Okay, so right right at the top left there, there is a little button. It's the reset button if you need to reset the unit. We have the eject button here for the CD DVD drive. We have a voice control button, volume up, volume down, home, and then press and hold for power off. And then we have two more buttons here, which we'll, do with, which we'll have to do with the applications when the unit is running. So we'll look at that. Um, this will press and hold will also mute and then the infrared eye for the remote. Okay guys, so first thing we have is the Pioneer boot screen, splash screen. Um, we have had 
couple of people ask us if you can change the boot screen or splash screen on these Pioneer units. Um, I have to confirm this unit, we'll do that together. But for the units that don't have the obvious settings, then no. The answer is no, it cannot be done. Okay, so here we are. This is our main home screen. Um, the unit is in off mode right now, so there's no audio output coming through. We have a little widget here, which will not expand unless you have your device connected, in which case it will expand and give you the options of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Okay, this is the main widgets on the home screen. So we've got radio, TV, which is disconnected and will not work at the moment uh, until you plug in a module. CD, DVD, which is uh, not illuminated as there is nothing in the drive. Bluetooth disconnected and Spotify, um, which will work through Bluetooth or through USB if connected. What you saw me do here was press and hold a widget and so what you can do is move widgets around and you can also, what's that do? Okay, so you can also change the layout of the screen. Now, if we hit this AV, it's gonna expand the menu. Now, right here is illuminated a little bit differently. This is what you will see on the main homepage. So we can go ahead and get rid of TV because it doesn't work here and we can replace that with something like USB. And then you can do whatever suits you, okay? And then when we press our little home button, we now have USB, okay? Uh, voice control won't work unless you have Bluetooth or um, USB slash CarPlay Android Auto connected. Volume up and down, so as we see, there's nothing happening right now. This is because we're not on anything. So if we go to the radio screen, we can go ahead and play with our volume. We have FM 1, 2, and 3. So there's FM 1, 6 stations, FM 2, 6 stations, 3, and then 1. So you've got 6 stations for AM as well. Okay, if we press this button, it will bring us back home. Now it's showing us what is happening at the moment. And right now it's playing 8750, which is not a radio station. USB again won't work unless it's connected. We'll go ahead and look at phone. Okay, once Bluetooth is connected, guys, you can go, you've got your presets here. Phone book, it will bring up, it will bring up recent calls, missed, and whatever that one is. You've got keypad and voice control. So voice control obviously will work when you press that, but we've also got that voice button, which will now bring up voice control so you can tell Siri to do call whoever or direct you somewhere uh, not picking up voice right now because the microphone is not connected okay settings so we've got obviously your AV settings the beep tone so when you are pressing things you're gonna hear feedback of a beep you can turn that on or off auto mix leave that off it's for music in and output settings so if you do start plugging in things to the AV inputs, just make sure it's all turned on as well. Camera settings, again, if you do hook up that reverse wire, make sure you go into camera settings and turn that on. And then you can also go and adjust your guidelines to make them work with the car. Demo mode, so we'll get rid of that. Obviously the language, location. Steering wheel controls. Um, it's not illuminated right now, so I'll show you how to get that to work. Restore settings all the way back to factory. Touch panel calibration, so if you do ever find that you're touching you know, speaker settings and instead it hits display settings or something else, you go ahead and recalibrate the screen. Dimmer settings on auto, so like I was saying guys, you don't need to connect that um, orange dim wire when you've got automatic dimming. Driving position, whether you're left or right. Okay, so that will be updated as soon as the USB is connected. And now we've got right here, Android Auto, make sure that's on. Picture adjustment, so you can play with um, all of that sort of stuff. Brightness contrast, this is new. I've added this to the new platform. And system information. You can change the background to any one of these pictures that they've got for you. 
you can use your own as well. Now this is where it gets a little bit dicey. You can add your own photo. It's sort of hard to get it to fit exactly. I've tried a bunch of different photos and size settings and I could never get it to fit perfectly. It will only be on the background of a screen like um, that we were just on. Oops. And it will also be on the background here. So it will not be in the background when you get that Pioneer screen on startup. Now uh, that screen cannot be changed. Okay, and now some units, we did a review on the 9200 DAB. If you go into picture settings, you can actually, there we go, so we had this open before, but you can also access that from the menu. Um, what I was saying was you can actually change the splash screen in the settings. So if it's not here in the obvious settings, like in here, then you can't do it. All right, this is cool. So you've got a screen that actually moves. So let's use that one. Home screen. So you, you can't have a moving screen on the home screen. We'll just change it to that for now. Okay, clock settings. You can change the clock, how that all looks. And if you notice, every time we change to one of these, it's bringing us into the same screen, but just changing that, okay. Theme, so we can change colors. That will change this. You can pick your own. All right. Yeah, we went through that already. Okay, sound settings, guys. So they've got the same graphic equalizer that we've seen in a lot of their units. Um, graphic equalizer set to powerful from factory. Uh, your fader and your balance. Mute level to attention, which just brings the music right down, but not off. If you do add a sub and there's no sound, make sure your sub is turned on. Speaker level, so you can go in here and turn speaker levels up. Uh, I would say don't play with that unless you know what you're doing. You, you can also change your listening position and get the sound exactly how you like it. Crossover, so you can go ahead and set that. Um, okay, so it's showing you how to use the crossover. Let's go slope. We'll change the slope to about six. And let's go ahead and hit 80. Okay, start lower. The higher you have this number, oh, not that one, this number, the less bass you'll hear from the speakers, essentially. It's the easiest way of explaining it. So start, if you're gonna play with the high pass filter, uh, it's one thing that sucks about Pioneer is their settings for this. Start at 40, even less, turn it up, see how it goes, do the rear as well. It's the exact same thing for the rear. And then see exactly sort of what works, depending on the music you listen to, to make it sound good. Cause this can really, really help the sound of your factory speakers without needing to change them. All right, time alignment. Okay, so we've done this, so it's done it automatically, but you can go ahead and measure from the speaker to pretty much your ear in the car, and then do each speaker. Bass boost, leave that off. Loudness is another thing, it's rubbish. Um, and that's about it for sound, but there is a lot of settings there, which is good. Video settings. Okay, so you can go DVD setup. So all of this stuff, by the way, that we're seeing that won't work, oh, and Bluetooth settings, nice and easy. What we're gonna do, let's go home. So the unit is playing radio right now. Let's go ahead and put that unit into off mode. So press that again. So now we're in off mode because there's nothing here. There's nothing playing out of the speakers. The unit is essentially off. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. And then we go, see half of this stuff now you can't do, but the other half you can. Okay, oh, we'll make a lighter out of me. Uh, you'll probably need a DVD in there for this to work, but steering wheel controls now you can do. Okay, you can go ahead and do with or without adapter, depending on what you're doing. Um, I do want to do more in-depth videos on steering wheel controls, so we will be getting to that uh, eventually, but for the meantime, if you do have any questions, just drop a comment below and I've been answering everybody's questions. That's about it for settings, guys. So, oh yeah, it does work on the home screen. So we do have that moving wallpaper, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're in source off. You can go straight to iPod. Obviously, you need to have something connected. 
Mm, that's it. So let's um. So this is obviously playing my music. Let's go ahead and hit Spotify and see what happens. Okay, so it's playing Spotify. It's going to bring up. So I must have been on five playlists. But if you go here, yeah. So I've just got this 2000s rap and R&B playlist. If you just go ahead and hit that, it will work and bring up this. Um, album art as well which is cool okay guys so I've just plugged in my USB directly to the back of the unit so all we need to do is just plug that in all right we're on 2% almost dead but this is actually gonna charge now so here we have the Apple CarPlay widget now we're straight here straight into CarPlay this is the iOS 13 it's just the beta version so your CarPlay might look a bit different um, but this is what the new one looks like so some of the apps You've got WhatsApp, Waze, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Maps, Audible, Settings, a calendar, podcasts, AV, now playing phone, music maps, messages. Okay. So in phone, you've got your favorites, your recents, your contacts, dial a number, okay, all that sort of stuff. Um, voicemail if you have it to go through, pretty easy, um, nice and nice and fast these units like look at that it's smashing through them okay press home music if you use the music app which I don't maps obviously maps will either bring you home you can press home it will take you right there you can search okay you can search for things close by you can voice control and just tell Siri where to take you or you can even type in and it will bring up suggestions so if we go Westfield it's gonna do that okay um, or you can just go ahead and look on the map where you want to go. Um, home will bring us back to our home screen. Messages, now it's not going to work because no microphone. But basically you can go through here and it will Siri will read your text messages out to you and then you just talk back to Siri and she will put it in text form and send it. Now playing will now play whatever you were playing last. For me it will be Spotify, just like that. AV will bring you back to the Pioneer screen, same will, uh, same as pressing this button right here. Calendar, so it's not showing you what you've got today, but it's showing you, see tomorrow we've got three dash cams to do in Hawthorne East, um, which is in my calendar, and it's bringing it up. That's about it. You can't really do show you what you've got going on or coming up. Settings, so there's a couple settings you can get that. If you've ever text someone and you get the instant message, do not disturb me while I'm driving, you can go ahead and turn that on. Appearance, you can change it to look like the old way or dark, dark is better. Suggestions and album art we want. That's about it for settings. So we can go back now. Audible, um, don't use that yet, but we'll be planning on using that soon. Google Maps, um, so that's a big one. A lot of people prefer Google Maps. It's just the same, just the same as um, Apple Maps. Okay, you can go through change the options let's look at how you okay turn on the microphone all right so if you do want to go anywhere you can just go ahead add a destination you can go for recent searches or just search where you want to go same thing it will bring up suggestions all right bring it back home oh yeah so Pressing that will bring us back to the main home screen. Pressing this home will bring us back to normal. iHeartRadio, which is a cool app, will pretty much give you all digital radio stations through an app. Um, Spotify, so that will just work like it does on the phone. You've got all the mixes that you listen to. Um, you can go ahead and browse music or go through your library. Waze, another great app that works. Okay. When say follow instructions on your phone. Okay, Waze wants to use Bluetooth. Let's hit OK on that. All right, pretty easy. So um, I don't really use this app, but uh, apparently it's pretty good. Um, same thing. Search here. What's that? I guess that will bring up, that will show you back to where you are. No, I'm not sure what this little button does. Find out one day. Now voice control, favorites. And obviously search that brings you back to where you are or you can go ahead and look on the map where you want to go all right and WhatsApp same as messages it's all speech okay so whether you're talking to someone on WhatsApp 
you can go through and, and message them that way. That's about it for CarPlay, guys. Like I said, now with a phone connected, we can press that and it will do this. Web link. Okay, so with web link, you just tap that. Okay, I think we need to download. I'm gonna download web link and just, we'll see how it works. Connected, let's see what happens. All right, so here we have a music player, a video player, Yelp, YouTube, and Zomato. That looks like the best thing it's got so far. All right, look at that. You can watch YouTube while you're driving through web link. How good is that? Let's go ahead and... Uh, seems a little bit slow, to be honest. Um, let's look up. Yeah, you can see how slow it is. It's tripping me out. Okay, guys, so I searched my channel and it didn't come up. So obviously... You can't search channels, but I've just searched one of my videos and it has come up. So, oh, I've got the wrong one. We don't want to go to that guy, we want me. All right, here we go. So, any video you search will come up. You do have full YouTube functionality, but you can't search channels. So you have to search by um, the name of the, hey, look who it is. Name of the video. Okay, video quality, um, not that good. Um, and that's due to this, not due to my video. But hey, I wouldn't be complaining. We've got YouTube, it's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and close that. So uh, just to reiterate, what you need for Weblink is to just go ahead to your App Store or Play Store, download Weblink Host. Don't download the Weblink for Kenwood. You need the host, um, and then obviously it will be here. And then you can go ahead and use some apps that you have on your phone. Um, I would say that the apps that come up before are not the only apps that work with Weblink. See this? So you've got to do this. Now I'll show you what apps I've got. Maybe some apps you have will work, um, but the apps that I've got, this is all we have. Video player, so I'm guessing. Uh, nope. Very slow. Oh, oh, look at that. So this is bringing up my camera to the, the photos that I have in my camera app on the phone. Pretty cool. So I guess there's more stuff for you to go through there. And then what else do we have? Music player, so I wonder what that will be, if it will be Spotify, or maybe what music you have on the phone itself, or Apple Music might be any of those. So I don't have any of that stuff. But anyway, pretty cool. Um, that is about it for all the features of this unit, guys. Uh, I don't have an Android phone today to show you Android Auto. However, if you go through our list of videos, we've done Android Auto um, reviews on the Android Auto itself and exactly how it works and all that good stuff. So whether you want to see the new Android Auto or the old one, we have a video on both. All right, guys, that's about it for the Pioneer ABHZ5250. Now, um, if you've already seen or interested in, just have a look at the 5150 review and then you can compare this 5250 to the 5150. Go ahead and compare it to some of the other reviews we've done on different head units. Um, this is a typical Pioneer style unit with the resistive touchscreen. Um, it does look good and it works well, nice and fast. The web link is something different, so I don't think the 5150 has web link. If you do that, obviously you're gonna get YouTube. Um, I think it's a good unit. So yeah, any questions guys, just drop a comment below. Um, anything else you wanna see, drop a comment below. We've been doing more how-to stuff, how to head units, installs, all that sort of stuff, um, and we'll continue to do so. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you.